you're not charging enough. I know that because very few businesses are in fact charging enough. So you don't have enough profits, you don't have enough revenue, you don't have the margins you need to grow and scale. And if you don't get this fixed, you will always be in the spin cycle of not having enough money to get where you wanna go. So the real question of course is how do you raise your prices? Whether you're selling a product or you're selling a service, you're charging what you've charged because you've come up with it in some kind of abstract way. If it's a product, you've probably looked at the market, you've probably looked at what other people are charging, you look at what it costs you to produce it, what it costs you to market it and to sell it, and then you say, this is the price. If you're selling a service, you've probably gone online or looked at competitors or looked in your region, you just said, this is what other people charge. That's how I started when I started my business. Right? When we started the, the video agency in 2006, I went, how do people charge? Oh, they charge half days and full days. What do they charge? I think I started my pricing at like $400 for a full day. We now charge like $1,200 per person for a full day because what I realized early on was I wasn't charging enough. And it was 100% because of a lack of confidence. I just didn't know. I kind of looked around and said, what are other people charging? Oh, they're charging this? Great, I guess I gotta charge the same thing. This is especially challenging if you're a sole proprietor or if you're a single person. How can I justify charging what I charge when they know that I'm the only person doing it? That is 100% of lack of confidence. That is you saying you are only worth minimum wage or $20 an hour or $30 an hour. So how can you justify charging $100 or $200 or $300 per hour? If you're selling a product and you're going into the market, the lack of confidence that you have means that you are only going to charge what your competitors charge. You don't think that your product is good enough. You don't think that you can build up enough value in the mind of the customer to be able to charge more than what your competition is charging. And in this case where you run into trouble is your competitor is at scale. Your competitor has volume. They have all of their channels and all of their systems figured out. So they are just humming along and humming along and humming along. You don't know anything. <laughs> Sorry to say it, you're starting out. You're just growing your business. You are not at scale, you are not at volume. You have to have higher margins to be able to survive. And so the lack of confidence is what makes you drive down your prices. Of course, those are all the problems, but it doesn't just end there. There are other reasons why your pricing is too low. You are probably projecting your values onto others. If you're a cheap person like me, I'm a cheap person. I do not like to spend money. I like to save money. So I went into business thinking that everybody I was talking about was a cheap person. Some people value time or they want to work with the very best person. Some people want to work with the best person to the point where if you come in too cheap, they don't think you're the best person. They think that you must not value your time enough. Because in this case, what I value is not money. So then that's the next thing. You gotta figure out what is it that people actually value and you gotta stop projecting your values onto them. And of course this comes into when people are shopping, they come with a preconceived notion. They come with an idea of what something should cost. And that, that idea of what something should cost has been drilled into them. And when it comes to pricing, there's a lot of psychology that goes into it. If I think water should be free because I open up my tap and it just comes out, and yet when I go to the store, I'm willing to spend one, two, three, four dollars on a cold bottle of water, in my mind, it's the exact same thing, I, but I'm comfortable having it for free out of my tap and I'm comfortable spending one, two, three, four dollars for a cold bottle because I know it's on the go. If you ask me about that water that comes from the mountain over in Asia that costs seven or eight or ten dollars for bottled water, I think that's insane. I think that's totally crazy. That's crazy for me. But a lot of people will buy that water because they're comfortable spending seven or ten dollars on it. They have a preconceived notion that it's a better water. There's great branding tied into it, so they're willing to spend money on that. I think that's nuts. I would always rather have tap water that, that's free, <laughs> even if it tastes a little bit uh, like uh, chlorine or something, than a cool bottle of water that I have to spend crazy amounts of money on. That's me. And so when you're looking at your product and you're looking at your pricing, you have to look at your customer. You have to understand what they value. Maybe they don't value money the same way you do. Maybe they're actually buying something for a different reason than you've considered. And then the last thing is what are the preconceived notions? What are the things that they're bringing to it? If you sell a service that they think should be $10,000, but you're selling it for $5,000, you're not going to do a good job. You must be too cheap. Why are you cutting corners? If they're planning to spend $10,000 on something and you're $45,000, wow, you are totally out of the ballpark. 
they cannot afford you. They're way too expensive. And so, so much about pricing is right sizing what you need to charge against what people are willing to spend. And that thing that they're willing to spend isn't really what they're willing to spend, it's what they think that they should spend. And so those are all of the things you have to consider. So how do you go about raising your pricing? The answer is really actually very simple. You just start to raise your pricing. <laughs> but, but before you do that, here are a few additional things you consider. First, ladder up. Work your way up project by project, sale by sale, customer by customer. If you're selling online, retail, or whatever it is, quarter by quarter, start to move your pricing up. This will allow you to start to test what an appropriate amount of pricing is based on your current clients. Now, here's the thing. Your current clients, your current customers, may not be the customers or clients that you need. They may not be the people that you want. You may hit a ceiling, an artificial ceiling, and you may say, oh, people aren't willing to spend money on this. They're not willing to buy it because you have the wrong customers and the wrong clients. If you're selling a product that has this really established price that people are used to spending, another way to go about it is to raise the pricing so high that it kind of angers people and then lower the pricing back down to the middle and now they feel like they've gotten a deal. Let me, let me walk through an example. So lettuce, I'm used to spending $1.60, $1.99 on a head of lettuce. The, uh, the other week it went up to $3.50 a head and, and now, come on, $3.50 for a head of iceberg lettuce. My wife and I were incensed. We stopped buying lettuce. We were so angry. And then I get this text from my wife where she's like, oh, lettuce is $2.50. What a deal. $2.50 for a head of lettuce. Now, here's the thing. She was pretty happy it was $2.50. I'm still pretty pissed off. I'm used to spending $1.60 or $1.99 for a head of lettuce. So what did they do there, right? What did they do? They wanted to move the head of lettuce up. And if they moved the head of lettuce up to $2.50 a head, we would be angry. So they moved it up to $3.50 a head, got us really angry, and moved it to $2.50, and now we think we have a deal. That's psychology right there. So what you want to do is you want to be able to ladder up your pricing quarter by quarter, sale by sale, whatever it is, you want to start to work your way up. If you have repeat clients who are buying, buying, buying all the time, then maybe you want to handle it with just a slight increase or you want to do a pretty large increase and then maybe a discount. This of course comes to the second point. You have to have confidence. You cannot kind of move your pricing around. You cannot be wishy-washy with your pricing. You have to have the confidence to charge more. I don't know how to tell you how to build confidence. You just have to do it. Tony Robbins has this great chart that talks about taking action leads to action happening or something. I don't know, there's four things, hold on. I didn't write it down in this book. So Tony Robbins has this great uh, box chart where there's basically potential and then there's action and then there's results and then there's certainty. Most people wait for certainty, right? Should I move up my pricing? How am I going to be certain about it? But the truth is that you have the potential to move up pricing. So then you take action and move up the pricing. You're going to get some positive results from that and then that will be build certainty. That certainly leads to more potential, which leads to more action, which leads to more results, which leads to more certainty. And you start this loop of building confidence in what you're doing. So the only way within pricing or with anything you're doing to actually become confident, is this the right choice or not, is to realize you have the potential, sale by sale, deal by deal, quarter by quarter, to move up your pricing, to take action. Some people might be upset. Most people won't even notice, in fact. And then that will lead to this certainty that can build and this confidence that you can have in doing it time after time. When I started and I was doing it 400 or 450 per day, I didn't arrive at a $1,200 per day uh, you know, videographer rate. It was going from 450 to 600 and 600 to 650 to 800 to, to 1,000 to 1,200. You have to start to move up your pricing. I've been doing this for 12 years, so I've had a lot of time to do it. But the, the first thing is to realize that you just need to start to take action. The third thing is that you have to be willing to lose. You have to be willing to move up your pricing, to have someone say, you're crazy. You are crazy. I am not working with you. And you go, okay, I'm sorry. Sorry to hear that. If you're not willing to lose the deal, then you do not have any power in the negotiations or the process. You have to be willing to lose the deal. How do you get that confidence? How do you get that willingness to lose something that's sitting right in front of you when you want it so bad and you need it so badly? I had a business coach in my first year who told me, Mark, you need to walk into every conversation like you have a million dollars of cash sitting in your pocket. When I started my business, I made $18,000 my first year. 
My daughter was three months old. My wife wasn't working. We lived below the poverty line. You know how hard it was to walk into every conversation like I had a million dollars sitting in my pocket? Like I didn't actually need this deal. I want to help you, but if, if you, you don't think this pricing is fair, if you don't think this works for you, if you can't afford it, I totally understand. Being able to just walk away from stuff and being able to lose, be willing to lose, walking in like you have a million dollars of cash in your pocket, it's a mindset that takes time to develop, but once you do, you will be in a much more powerful position. And then the last thing you need to look at is your credibility. Do you actually have, do you project, do you share, do you build trust, do you build credibility in the mind of the people that you're working with? When your product is being sold, are there testimonials? Are there reviews? Are, is there social proof that it works? Are you in fact doing everything that you can to build up the credibility you need to charge what you wanna charge? You need to be able to make the value scale so high that people think it's a no-brainer. I was looking at custom shirts. It's like $140 for a custom shirt. Is that an appropriate amount for a custom tailored shirt where I get to pick everything? It seems fair to me, right? It's not inexpensive. It's not crazy expensive. I'm wearing a hoodie right now that I bought for like 50 bucks, so I'm certainly not gonna be spending $140 on a custom shirt anytime soon. But the pricing seems fair based on the preconceived notion I have of what a dress shirt should cost. Right? Double of what an off the rack is, half of what a European dress shirt costs. Seems fair. But what would be even better for this company is if they moved it to a price where it was a no brainer for me. If I bought shirts all day every day, if I, if I wore suits, if I worked in an office like that where I, had to, where I had to buy these things, then they would want to get to a place where it just seemed like such a great deal that it was a no brainer that I had to do it. Final thing, move up your pricing. Just do it. Move up your pricing today. Oh my goodness, I can, do, I can just pay this and this and this and I get this and this and that? Wow, let's get started. If growing and scaling your business by being better at sales and better at marketing, better at customer experience is important to you, be sure to check out this video right over here. And like always, subscribe to my channel, click on the bell icon and get each video every day when it drops.